Open your Bibles, please, to 1 Kings. Rehoboam. Rehoboam's going to become king. But he's going to lose uh, lose most of the kingdom. Rehoboam splits the kingdom. And this is quite a story. You probably heard this story. There's lots of lessons from this story. And uh, last week we were looking at Jeroboam. Jeroboam, one of Solomon's adversaries that rises up and and here Solomon hires him. He hired his own adversary and all the problems that are going to take place. And we left off where Ahijah, Ahijah goes to Jeroboam. Why he didn't go to Solomon, it may be that Solomon had, the Lord had personally appeared to Solomon twice. And Solomon had not obeyed the Lord. And now the kingdom is going to be rent from Solomon's family. The mercies of the Lord, it's not going to happen during Solomon's life because of David. God tells Solomon that um, he's going to show mercy because uh, for da- in verse 34, it says, Howbeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose, because he kept my commandments and my statutes. You wonder how many mercies the Lord will show to our children because we parents love the Lord got to be some mercies that the Lord will show to our children just because we love him, we serve him, we want to, um, we want all the benefit, all the blessings we can get from the Lord and here God tells Solomon that um, well telling Jeroboam that he's not going to take the whole kingdom out of Solomon's hand, but and he's not going to take it while Solomon's still alive, take it all, but it is good. It's going to be split. It's going to be a mess. It's going to be a mess. So, chapter 12. Chapter 12 is the story, the kingdom splits. And there's all kinds of lessons here, so we will uh, we'll pray and we'll start reading down through the story and mentioning some of the lessons. And as we go through, I'm sure you'll think of other thoughts and other lessons that I'll miss. I'll just mention some that I've written down. And there's a lot we can learn here. So, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your church. So thankful for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Thankful for our, our Christian family. And just pray that uh, you'd help us to serve you together. And help us to love one another. And help us to edify one another. And... We pray that as we read this story and um, just uh, all that happened here in this story, we pray that help us to draw principles out of your word, lessons out of your word that will help us in, in our service for you, our lives for you. Pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us and Pray that you would help me as I preach. In Jesus' name, amen. The story starts out that in Rehoboam, this is Solomon's son, 
Rehoboam, he's always he's supposed to be king. He's, you can, I didn't write this down, but it's obvious through the story is wisdom is not inherited. Rehoboam didn't inherit just, just because you might have a dad that uh, loves the Lord and uh, serves the Lord and does you know, things good and right according to God's word. You better get into God's word. You better study it. You better apply it to your life. Ask God to help you. Ask God to help you to, uh, you know, make your life a uh, uh, matter of service to Him, to glorify Him, to praise Him, and ask God for wisdom because wisdom's not inherited. Although this definitely wasn't Rehoboam's case. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel will come to Shechem to make him king. They're going to make Rehoboam king. Solomon passed away at the end of chapter 11. It says that um, in verse 43, Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead. And they're going to confirm that reign. And they go to Shechem to confirm that. And the first principle here, first lesson, uh, number one, plans don't always work out the way you think they will. Rehoboam's just thinking, oh, you know, this is mine. This, I don't know if he wasn't listening to the news. He hadn't read the newspaper. I don't know if he... Um, Hadn't run into Ahijah. I don't know if he was just ignoring God's word, ignoring the prophet. Maybe his dad, his dad started ignoring. You know that. We keep saying, but Solomon started out so strong. And Solomon will have rewards in heaven. You know, our God is so good is that he will give credit where credit is due. You see that in the, in the, in Revelation, in the seven churches, and God will say, well, I know the good things you're doing, but this is what you're not doing right. And God is, we said, we throw the baby out with the bathwater. And Solomon started out so strong, uh, but then he, his heart got turned away from the ways of his father, David, and he just went, he went the wrong way. And I don't know if, if, Rehoboam just had his own plans, his own things on his mind, and he wasn't listening to what was going on around, around about him because Abijah the prophet had told Jeroboam, I'm going to give the kingdom to you. I'm giving most of the kingdom to you. And did, did Rehoboam just go on his merry way? You know, that's what people do is... They'll hear that, you know, God's not going to bless if you're not loving him, serving him, following him, and just go, just go and think that, yeah, well, I am, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to take life by the tail, and I'm going to get what I want to get, and things will, things will be just fine. Did Rehoboam do that? Looks like that was, I mean, he goes down, he's going to become king and it's not gonna he, he should have been listening to the news he should have been listening somehow i'm sure i think that it had to have gotten around i mean here his father is the bible says in verse 40 verse 40 solomon sought therefore to king to kill jeroboam and rehoboam must have been, dad why are you so why are you so angry why are you so uptight What's bothering you? Everybody's talking about you want to kill Jeroboam. And, I mean, it had to have been out is that Solomon's, well, son, God has said Jeroboam's going to have most of the kingdom given to him. And did Rehoboam just, was he just oblivious? Was he just oblivious? Is there some people... Uh, Christians and I is just oblivious. Seems like Rehoboam was. And Rehoboam's going to find out plans don't always work out the way you think they will. You know, things are going to go 
God's way. Even when you think you're in charge, when you think you're running your life, when you think that, you know, your life is in your own hands, no, it isn't. God, God oversees it all. God even oversees a life that is lived in rebellion to him. God still oversees it. And God gets the final say, whether enter thou into the joy of the Lord, because you've received the Lord as your Savior, or depart from me, I never knew ye. You know, depart into eternal punishment. God, God's in control. And so Rehoboam here, uh, the first lesson, we plans don't always work out the way you think they will. I can just see Rehoboam, oh, I'm going to be king. I am king, and this is great. And he's going to have lots of problems. Uh, secondly, we see another principle we see as we read along is the adversary is always lurking about, waiting for the right time to pounce. And it says, it came to pass when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it. Oh, Rehoboam's going down to, they're going to confirm him as king. Ah, uh, let's go down and, and say what we've got to say. It says, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. That they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, So, the enemy, the adversary, was just looking for the right time. And now Jeroboam's going to go down and say, and he's going to oppose, he's going to oppose Rehoboam being king. And we better be on our toes, and we better be listening to what God has said, and what God is saying because there's certain times the adversary just steps in. And he does, he does look for opportune times. And you've got to foresee, uh, what's, how does Proverbs say it? That, how's it pro, there's a verse, Proverbs, that just, how's it go? That's it. The wise man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. You might have some, you know, sometimes it might be a family reunion when you, you know, you love your family, you pray for your family, and sometimes you just say, oh, this just happened, this happened. This is going to come up. I bet you this will come up. So, and you just, like, start praying about that. <laughs> start praying about it. Um, but... I mean, it's pretty obvious in the Bible, in 1 Peter tells us that the devil walketh about as a roaring lion. You know, he's looking who he can devour. And he's not just haphazard. The devil makes a plan, and he said, oh, this is a good time. God help us to foresee. Too bad Rehoboam should have thought, I mean, Rehoboam, wake up. Ahijah has said that the kingdom's going to go most of it to Jeroboam. God said that. Wake up. And so what's going to be the, the something's going to happen here. And Rehoboam just seems like he's not thinking. He's not thinking. Do you think about life? You know, you young people, teenage years, Teenage years, you're just young, right? Just young. Teenage years are important years. And the devil, the devil tries to entice young people. He's a bully. He picks on, the devil will pick on young people. Elijah, hey Elijah, they taught to get the... Uh, just want, this is important, this is important. We're saying that the devil will pick on young people. He's a bully. Everything about the devil is wicked. It is evil. Does he pick on young people? Well, just look around in some of the 
terrible things that young people live through in their families and the problems and the tragedies. And, and then uh, most, most men and women that are on drugs and that are, uh, you know, or are alcoholics for years and years. It started when they were kids. It started with, when I was a kid at Lawrence High School, there were already several kids that would come to school drunk. This is 40 years ago. 40 years ago. Kids that would come to school drunk. Just a 16-year-old boy, and I don't know the situation, and maybe it was accidental, but a boy down in Lincoln that just died of an overdose. Does the devil pick on young people? I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm, say, I'm saying that the Bible says be sober. Be sober. Be serious. To stand for the Lord. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Be aware. He wants to bring you down. He wants to ruin your life. Rehoboam, he's just, oh, I'm going down. I'm going to be... I'm going to be king. And this kid, you go to a high school graduation and you hear, you know, you hear the speeches. Uh, uh, they're going to follow their dreams and uh, life. I've got to, you know, everything's going to be wonderful. And it's not without the Lord. You could, you could climb the ladder. You could be president of the United States. But without God, it's a wasted life. Without God, it's a wasted life. And you spend eternity in hell. Are you thinking? Are you thinking? The adversary's thinking. Your adversary's thinking. He's watching. He's waiting. So here we have, first uh, lesson here is the plans don't always work out the way you think they will. And Rehoboam, uh, Rehoboam's plans aren't working out. But, you know, God's plans always work out. So if you just get on God's page, follow the Lord, he'll work things out. The adversary is always lurking about. He's always work, uh, lurking about waiting for the right time to pounce. Number three, the adversary exploits our sins and failures. The adversary exploits our sins and and failures, and here, and so they, they, these men come down, Rehoboam's going to be made king, Jeroboam and his men come down, and in verse 4, they say to Rehoboam, thy father made our yoke grievous, now therefore make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. And he says, you know, your father was, I mean, he just brought misery. He just brought misery. And you're part of the problem. You're going you're gonna to be just like him. You're part of the problem. And just take sin. Exploit. He, uh, the adversary, he's taking in... Um, He's taking advantage. He's taking advantage of a uh, of this situation. He's taking advantage of a flaw. Solomon had a flaw. The enemy's going to jump on that. He's going to what? What should have Rehoboam? Rehoboam should have. This is what Rehoboam should have done. He should have said, "You're right. You're right." I'm not going to be that way. I'm going to forsake my sin. Uh, my father's sin. This is, yeah, my father was doing that. I acknowledge that that was not right. That was not good. That wasn't leading the people in love, in kindness, mercy. And you can, this was Rehoboam's time to shine, to do right and to do good and to say, well, let me tell you right now, I'm not going to be that way. But no, Rehoboam, let the, the, 
they were using, they were jumping on a flaw and going to use that. It's going to end up destroying, destroying the kingdom and, and just reaping havoc in, in the whole kingdom. And so the adversary exploits, will exploit our sins and failures. Don't let him. You say, well, I've got a lot of, I've got, I mean, I deal with sin. I have failures. Well, join the club. Confess them. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just confess them and and ask the Lord to help you. And Rehoboam didn't, he didn't do that. Uh, And so, Rehoboam says in verse 5, he said unto them, Depart yet for three days. What's this three days? uh, Rehoboam, you know what they said was true. That Solomon was too harsh. Uh, The historians say that in, in Milo, when Solomon built Milo, that Jeroboam was there. And he observed that Solomon was just lording lording his power over the people and using them to build, to build, 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 build. And it was right and good. It started out right and good in the right way when they're building to the glory of God and they're building the temple for the glory of God. But when it got into... uh, Everything else, and it's just, it's all for riches, and get more riches, and get more wives, and get more, 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 more horses, more, more, and he's just building and building, and no, this isn't right, Solomon, this is, and Rehoboam must have known it, but whether he was blind, we know he was obviously oblivious, and What's this three days? Oh, just wait three days. No. What's a uh, number four principle here is right from the words of the Lord Jesus. Jesus said, agree with thy adversary quickly whilst thou art in the way with him. When you're wrong and you know you're wrong, confess it. And Rehoboam's wrong. If you read the story, he's wrong. And he should have just confessed it. The principle of Jesus that was in Matthew 5, 25 is, when someone confronts you and you know you're wrong, then make amends. Make amends. Rehoboam didn't do that. Um, Rehoboam says, well, go away for three days. I'll think about this. Is Rehoboam really going to think about this? Let's read the rest of it. Let's continue in the story. Does Rehoboam... You know, you think three days, that give him plenty of time to say, yeah, definitely, i got to get this right and be as godly and gracious to these people. My father has piled up so many riches, I can ease the burden and I can help these people. And we can all serve God together. That wasn't in Rehoboam's mind. Uh, then, well, as you get down through the story, we'll see that. Well, we already know that God's taken the kingdom away. Most of that kingdom away is because it's a judgment. It's a judgment for the sin of Solomon. And so, says in verse, so what does Rehoboam do? You know that this is probably the most, the familiar thing that we remember of the story. You remember what Rehoboam does? Rehoboam, verse 6, it says, King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou will be a servant unto this people this day and will serve them and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. Man, that sounds like good advice. Sounds like good advice. That 
Number five principle here, value the counsel of the elderly. Value the counsel of the elderly. Young people, young people, your parents know more than you do. You say, how can I? How can they? How can, your parents know more than you do. Is your you you young ones all with me? Did you, Daisy, Daisy, did you hear that one? Your parents know more. Their parents, you, love your parents. The Bible says honor your parents. The Bible says obey your parents. And you might think, well, you don't know how grumpy my parents get. Uh, I, your parents love you more than you can even comprehend. You don't realize how much your parents love you. You won't realize it until you have your own children and you're going to think, wow, did my parents love me that much? And yes, if they were good, I know the parents here, I know they love you. Your parents love you. Listen to them. Don't get a rotten, bitter attitude the older you get. Because it's just like pounding your own self. You're hurting your own self. You get bitter against your parents. Your parents can be your best friends the rest of your life. You say, well, I don't talk to my parents. You more and more. You can grow in a relationship with your parents that will last you a lifetime. And when you get married and you have children, you'll be calling your parents to say, what do we do with these kids? Uh, uh, how do you take care of them? Uh, the, baby's, the baby's got this weird rash. Or the baby, what do I, what do, I do? How do I? And God has designed it that if you, will, if you will do what God says, you can have this wonderful friendship with your, your parents till the Lord comes. And God's word, God's word says, listen, listen to older ones, older ones, and uh, honor the older ones. And it was elders uh, throughout the Old Testament, it was elders that would guide in, in communities and guide in leadership for the nation of Israel, elders. And God says to respect elders. Rehoboam, he's probably most famous for rejecting the advice of the elders. Oh, yeah, those old people, they don't, they don't know what they're talking about. That's not going to help me. Yeah, that's the key. It's not going to help me. Pay attention. It's, it's, it's right and it's good, and, but it's not selfish and it's not all about you. Your parents know that it shouldn't be all about you. You've got to be considerate of others and love others. That's what the Lord tells us. And so Rehoboam rejects the advice of the elders and... You better learn from that. Don't do that. Don't do that. So number five is value, value the counsel of the elderly. I'm only going to give one more. And this is, this is a great one. Uh, and we'll just continue down through the story next week. But next point here is serving, serving others is the only way to truly lead. Serving others is the only way to truly lead. Because it's really not about leading, it's about serving. But if you serve, you'll lead. And you can't really lead unless you're serving. So, I'm a leader. Well, Rehoboam found out he wasn't much of a leader. He ended up like, a, uh, he was just a failure because he wasn't willing to serve the people. It says here, what did that older people, the older people realized this. They realized this. And uh, older people are trying to tell younger people, you know, think about others. 
serve others. It's about serving others. We are losing that, and you've heard me say this many times, we are losing this in our society today. But the Bible says men should be lovers of their own selves. We're losing the attitude like uh, Gloria writing cards and sending cards to everybody and thinking about everybody. I'm preaching to myself, too. I think that that generation just emphasized thinking of others. And I haven't grown up with such an emphasis as that. In the younger generation, I think it's even worse. Um, Avis Noyes, Avis Noyes, I'd go visit her, and she would have all kinds of people she was praying for and doing this. And, do, and then at the end of the day, uh, Avis would be calling uh, several different friends uh, here in town, elderly ones, you know, making sure they're okay, making sure they're all right. Do they need anything? Need any help? Uh, here, she's 95 years old. Do you need any help? Just, it's about serving. It's, life is about serving. The Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus taught us that. He girded a towel about him, he washed the disciples' feet, and then he said, I've done this for an example. I've done this for an example. You've got to serve. You've got to serve others. So these old, these old people tell, they tell Rehoboam, look at verse 7. Verse 7. They speak unto him. They say to Rehoboam, if thou will be a servant unto this people. Rehoboam's coming in. He's going to be king. He's going to be king. It's all about being king. The older people said, no. This, this, they don't even mention if you will be a king. They say, if you will be a servant. And here David, so many times, he says, David, my servant. David, my servant. If you're going to be a servant unto this people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then if you serve others, what does the Bible say here? Then they will be thy servants forever. They'd be, if Pastor Philbert called me and said, uh, Mitch, I'm having a hard time and I need help, and I'd be there like, like when you need me there. Because he served my family and he served the church there in Clinton and he loved us and cared for us. And um, serving, serving is the only way to truly lead. And the Bible warns, the Bible warns, and Rehoboam didn't, didn't uh, obviously, he thought to lord it over was the way to go. That's what Rehoboam thought. Lord it over, make, you know, my little, well, it's my, my little finger. So we get down the story. He said, my little finger is going to be heavier than, than what my father did. No, no, uh, God help us, God help us, just want to serve, want to serve. We will stop right there.